Paradigm, why is the concept of hybridization required in valence bond theory? Okie dokie. So we talked a little bit about valence bond theory, right? Valence bond theory is just showing the overlap. So overlap, am I going to spell overlap correctly? Oh, overlap of orbitals. Keep in mind that there are electrons in the orbitals, and when two elements come together to form a covalent bond, those orbitals have to overlap to form the bond. Now, what does hybridization have to do with it? Well, there are, I think, uh, five different hybridizations, right? You may have seen these as SP. They're like just random letters. SP, SP2, SP3, there's SP... 3D and then SP3D2, but these are the most popular ones. And what this is telling us specifically is what types of orbitals exactly that are actually doing the overlap. So in a SP, whoop, what happened to that three there? So in an SP hybridization, you would have a element. So let's just say here's the nucleus. And you would have one orbital that's designated as the S and the other orbital that's designated as the P. In sp2, you would have, so maybe I could just, just do this, right? In sp2, you would have a total of three orbitals. Now, this is not the correct way of drawing sp2 because of the um, bond angles, but I'm just showing you that there's one S, or one of these has to be an S, and the other two have to be the P. And then in SP3, you have one S and then now three P's. So what they tell you is what specific orbitals are doing the overlapping. So hybridization is required because with hybridization, you, you get two things. You get the specific orbitals that are, are overlapping, whether it's an S, whether it's a P, whether it's a D specific orbitals that overlap. And because we now are talking about the specific orbitals that are overlapping, um, and maybe I'll actually, yeah, that's fine. Um, we actually can get into bond angles, right? So hybridization gives the bond angle of the, you know, the uh, we'll say the covalent compound because it's these specific hybridizations that will tell us what bond angle these are trying to uh, bond with. So for example, if you're in SP and you have one overlap that's going this way and one overlap that's going this way, the angle between these two is 180 degrees. SP2 would be 120, and the SP3 is at 109.5 because that's the tetrahedral. But these are the reasons why hybridization is required in valence bond theory. It's because they actually tell you what specific orbitals are overlapping, and because you have those specific orbitals and how many there are, that gives the bond angle of the actual compound or the actual element that is making the bond. So maybe I should just say gives the bond angle of the element bonding. And I like that better. And there you go. I hope this helped. What'd you think? Thanks for tuning in. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. Um, if you can, click the subscribe button. That will help us out. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for your support. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.